Hey, this is Jerry from Blood Studio. And in our last tutorial, we developed the walls for the environment that's going to be the base of our mobile bounce scheme. So what are we gonna be doing in this one? Well, we need to create the paddle and we need to create the ball so we can see those things bounce. And if you're ready to keep at it, let's go. Now we need to go ahead and create our ball. I want to create a new 3D uh, sphere and I'm gonna call this ball. Okay, so we need to specifically tag our ball. So uh, where it says untagged up here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a tag. And then you can see I've got a few tags already in my game, but uh, I want to tag this as ball. So I'm just gonna save, uh, click ball or type ball, click save. Then I go ahead and cl click back on the ball. And then where it says tagged, I wanna go and select ball. So that way, and if we detect the collision of the ball with something, then we know this object is ball, okay? Cool, so now we have that set up, we need to go ahead and set up our paddle. Uh, so we're gonna use uh, Pro Builder for this. And if you don't have Pro Builder installed, you can download it for free. It's part of the Unity asset system. It is in the package manager. So I went to window and then package manager. And then in the search up here, if you just type in Pro Builder, it's the, the only one that's Pro Builder. And so you need to go ahead and download and then install. I already have it installed, so I don't need to worry about it. And then once you install that, you'll have this option for tools. And you can see that I also have a couple other tools up here uh, within my game, but Pro Builder is the one that we're looking for, Pro Builder window. Um, you'll get this window right here. I'm gonna go ahead and just undock this real quick so you can see it. And I have it set up as icons, but you can easily change that from icon mode to text mode. This is what you'll see by default. It looks something like this, probably a little bit bigger, um, but I like to have it in the icon mode. So I just click on the little three dot icon up there, click on icon mode, and then I like to dock it clear over on the very left hand side of my window in the single icon strip there. Cool. So I've got that set up and then it also gives me a few options up here. Now I'm not going to get into Pro Builder modeling, but in this particular demo, we're going to use Pro Builder to create a shape. So the one thing I want to do is go to my tools, Pro Builder, and then under editors, I want to go shape editor menu item. Okay. So I've got that. And this gives me the option to choose different types of 3D shapes. So here we've got, um, by default, it's set to cube, but you can go sprite, prism, so on and so forth. I've got one that's arch, okay? And then when you select that, you'll see that there's a physical uh, model presented on the stage, right? Let me bring that window back up again. So we have that on the stage, and then we, depending on which item you have selected, whether it's a cone or sphere or torus or whatever, um, you'll have options specifically for that shape. So here I know I want the depth to be one, which I'm trying to set everything up as one unit. Okay, so I have that. You can see that I have uh, the radius thickness. So how big this, this uh, game object is. I'm gonna go ahead and just increase the scale of it a little bit. Yeah, something like that looks pretty good. And then the thickness, that is how, um, I guess, fat the, the item is, how thick it is. Then the depth, again, that's kind of like the Z axis, how deep it is, but I wanna keep that to one unit. And then the number of sides, so currently you see that there are two sides, so it's the, the angle that's at the top. So if I want this to be a nice, smooth, uh, curved edge, then you need to increase the number of sides. So as you can see as I increase the number, that edge becomes very, very smooth. So it doesn't really take very many uh, edges. And then the arch in degrees, it's how big that arch is. So you can see if it's, you know, 180 degree arch, so it really creates a half circle. Uh, but I really don't need a half circle. I'm gonna have this be something like that, I think. 
And then I might also increase the radius just a little bit more because I kind of want it just to be a nice slight curve. And I think that looks pretty good. And if that is good, then I want to go ahead and click build. And now it's a 3D object in my scene. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is to go ahead and just move this so where that it's even with the ball. And that looks pretty good. I do need to rotate this. So I am going to go ahead and create um, this as the paddle object. But I'm going to put this inside of another game object. But I'm going to go ahead and rotate it here. So on the Z axis, so we can rotate it down. Because I want this to be the surface that I'm hitting off of. So let's move this over so that it's centered. The ball, I know our ball is centered. So we want to kind of have that centered within that space as well. I might need to rotate that down just a little bit more. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Cool. And then of course, it's uh, a little bit too high. So I'm going to go ahead and move that down. And then I can continue to play with the rotation of that, etc. Okay, so I'm going to take that paddle and I'm going to put that inside of another game object because that paddle has some rotation to it and I don't really want to uh, mess with the rotation on that because I might have some other options that, that I want to apply. So I'm going to bring that into a new game object. Then if I scale it, I'm scaling the parent object with that object inside of it versus the, the arch. Okay, so we'll call this controller. Yeah, and that works pretty good. Okay, so it is probably just a little bit on the big side. So let's go ahead and scale this down slightly. And I'm scaling the parent, not the paddle. So let's scale this down to be uh, 0.5 maybe. And 0.5. And I think that works. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave the Z axis as the 1. And then I can go ahead and just move this thing down. So it's towards the bottom of our screen. And then I think my ball's just a little bit too big as well. So let's go ahead and move this up towards the top and let's uh, decrease the size of this. We'll go ahead and make this ball maybe like 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0.5. So it's a little bit smaller and I think that works pretty good. So one last thing for this particular demo is I want to create a physics material, okay? So in the past, I've created materials which are the look for a game object but this is a material on how the the game object acts okay so it gives it its physical properties so i'm going to go over into my assets and i'm going to go ahead and create a new folder for physics material so create new folder and i'll just call this physics and then inside of that i'm going to create a physics material and I'm going to call this bounce. We have our controller. We've got that set up. We also need to, with the paddle, have that have some physical properties too. So let's go and for, we need to add a rigid body that to that. And we do not want to use gravity. Is kinematic is selected. And we're going to go ahead and freeze the rotation of that. But we're going to leave um, freeze position as off. Okay. Then we need to look at the ball. We need to add some a rigid body to that one as well. So we're going to add a rigid body. And here we want gravity checked because we want the gravity to actually pull this ball down. So um, freeze position we want to have off except for our Z axis because currently if you look at our, our game, it's kind of flat on the side and we don't want our ball to be able to bounce off in the Z plane, right? We want it to stay um, exactly flat. So if we freeze position on the Z axis, it's only going to bounce left, right, up and down and not in and out. Okay. So we've got that set up. We've created this bounce physics material. We need to go ahead and apply it to all of those scheme objects. So all we need to do is just to drag it on to our paddle. We drag it on to our ball. We drag it on to all of our walls. 
And if we, if we look to see where that's actually getting applied, if you look at the box collider or the uh, mesh collider, whatever type of collider that you have, it's getting attached to the material of that collider. Okay, so it's the physics material that's getting attached. So I just need to make sure I have this attached to all of my game objects. Boom, there we go. So now let's give this a test and see what happens. Hopefully that ball will now start to bounce. Now I might need to go and uh, edit the physics material, but this should give us a, a very start for our project. And our ball does not bounce but it does fall down, so that's cool. So let's go back to our physics material. I've selected it over here in my assets, my project window. In the inspector, here is where we're going to change some of the aspects of the bounce material. So it currently has some friction, also has static friction. I'm gonna go ahead and set those to zero so that there's no friction for the game object. Bounciness um, is set to zero by default. So that means there's no bounce, but we want bounce. And this is a number of in percentage. So it's either zero or one. That kind of equals uh, zero to 100%. So one equals 100%, but um, we're gonna go to one. So it's very bouncy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and with my bounce combine, I'm gonna go ahead and average and maximize. Okay, so now let's try it and see what happens. Hopefully our ball will bounce, boom, there we go. So we now have created this bounce and I'm not even doing anything and you can see already that our ball is bouncing around the space, which is really, really cool. In this particular demo, we went and put together the ball in the paddle. So what's coming up in the next tutorial? We're gonna make that paddle move. We're gonna make it move by just moving our cursor back and forth. And then we're also gonna add a trail to the ball just to add a little bit of excitement to it. Remember, I'm looking for your comments to help me figure out exactly what to do with this game, how to finish it out. Again, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next video is available. Until next time, peace.